David here, your certified remote financial planner using technology to make financial advice available to you on your schedule and wherever you may be. There are only a few days left in 2016 and the same thing is on the mind of every boy and every girl. You're in tax planning. It's because decisions made in the last few days of the year can have a big impact on the amount of taxes you'll owe come April 15th. So today, I'm gonna to highlight some of the most important considerations in my post year in tax planning decisions that will save you money. So, what is tax planning? Sounds fun, doesn't it? Well, it's basically making conscious decisions to buy, sell, donate, contribute, distribute that will affect your tax bill. It's done at the end of the year because we have more certainty about many of the tax variables and we can make minor tweaks that may have big impacts. So with the incoming Trump administration, doing year in tax planning is more important than ever. There's a lot of talk on Capitol Hill about tax reform and reducing rates. That's creating a big incentive to consider the planning opportunities that we have available. So what are they? The first planning tool to consider is medical savings accounts. If you have a flexible spending account or FSA, you better check the balance before December 31st. These accounts are use it or lose it. And if you want to get every bit of the benefit you can, make sure that you spend it down to zero while you still can. Another type of medical savings account that many people have is health savings accounts or HSAs. These accounts have a different year in planning consideration because they're, they're owned by you and the money rolls over from year to year. This means that you don't need to rush out and buy a mountain of band-aids just to get the account down to zero. But what you should consider is making additional contributions. Contributions are deductible, reduce your taxable income, and can save you money. The second set of tools I discuss in the post are individual retirement accounts or IRAs. In the post, I discussed three main considerations. Should you contribute to a traditional IRA and get a tax deduction, contribute to a Roth IRA to increase your retirement savings, or do a Roth conversion, which takes a distribution from an existing traditional IRA, and then you pay the taxes and move the funds into a Roth IRA. If your income was particularly low during 2016, Maybe because you're between jobs or you're a student, this can be a phenomenal year-end tax planning move. Make sure you check out the post for the details or speak with your CPA because it can get complicated. The next tool I discuss are charitable donations. The main point here is to recognize you'll only get a benefit from them if you're itemizing your deductions. Always be as charitable as your heart and while it can handle, but if you're making regular donations, Consider if you'll receive more benefit moving January's donation in December or vice versa. Or if you wanna make a large year-end donation to help offset a high income year. The fourth tool I discuss is tax loss harvesting. This is when you sell an investment in a taxable non-retirement investment account for a loss. Losses can be deducted on your taxes or used to offset gains. Two main things here. Deductible losses are limited to $3,000 per year and be aware of wash sale rules, which say if you purchase a substantially identical investment within 30 days of selling for a loss, the loss will be disallowed, meaning you won't be able to deduct it on your taxes. Educational savings accounts, or 529s, are up next. If the account is for someone that is currently in college and you're taking distributions, make sure that you've submitted all your qualified expenses from 2016 for reimbursement. The IRS requires that account distributions take place in the same year as the qualified expenses. On the other end of the planning with 529 accounts, if you're still saving for a student that's not yet attending college, you may want to make a contribution before year end. 34 states and the District of Columbia provide state tax deductions for contributions to 529s. So contributing now could put a little more money in your pocket come tax day. A sixth area for year-end tax planning consideration is the amount of taxes you've already paid. If there was a change to your family, such as getting married, having a child, a child graduating from college, and you didn't make an adjustment to your tax withholding, you may have a large refund or liability when you file your taxes. If there was a big change in your family, you know, consider taking one last look at your tax withholding to align it with what you think you're gonna owe. 
self-employed individuals or people with a side hustle like driving for Uber have an additional reason to review the taxes they've paid throughout the year. This is because their income is not subject to withholding by an employer. They're required to make estimated tax payments throughout the year. To avoid a big surprise and a scramble for cash come April 15th, they should run a tax projection before year end and consider if they need to make an additional estimated payment or maybe reduce the one they already have scheduled. This can help them avoid penalties for not having paid their taxes on time. One final year-end tax planning consideration I discuss in the post is accelerating or delaying income. You may think, hey man, I'm looking to get paid, I always want to collect that money as soon as possible. Well, if there's going to be a big change to your effective tax rate because, say, the Republicans are going to reduce rates, there could be a significant savings for waiting. On the other side, it may be beneficial to accelerate income where you can. If you're moving to a state with income taxes, your overall state plus federal rate could be higher next year. Or maybe your business is growing or your salary will be substantially higher and push you into a higher tax bracket next year. Look, if your employer asks you if you want your bonus this year or next, or you have the opportunity to invoice a customer now or later, just think about what might be best. Year in tax planning is about being proactive. If you take time to consider what's changing in your life from year to year, you may identify an opportunity where a small adjustment could save you hundreds or thousands of dollars in taxes. And look, this stuff is complicated, I know, but you don't have to go it alone. That's what you pay your CPA or tax preparer to do. Make them earn their money by doing some year-end planning, not just preparation in April. So with that, I thank you for watching. Be sure to check out this post as I go into much more detail and you could really save some money if you read everything. So as always, if you wanna be up to date with the best financial advice, subscribe to this YouTube channel, my weekly blog, or schedule a free 30 minute one-on-one -on -one call with me, your certified remote financial planner, using technology to make financial advice available to you on your schedule and wherever you may be. <music>